Welcome to the BTG Online School. My name is Imad, and we are going to be looking at a lesson on vertical projectile motion. So the first thing we really want to do is actually break down each of these terms. Uh, is really break down each of these terms. And that very first term that we see over there is actually the word vertical. So what does it mean for something to move vertically, for example? Uh, let's take this. Something moving up and down is something that's moving vertically. So right now my pen is moving vertically. If we move horizontally, for example, my pen would move from left to right, like we see over there. Okay. Now, let us take a look at the word projectile. So I have a definition over here of what projectile actually means. Uh, as you can see, a projectile is an object that is propelled through the air. <coughs> My apologies. It's an object that is propelled through the air. So if I have a ball, for example, and the ball moves in this motion as described on the screen, up like that, like that, like that, and it's going up, 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 it reaches a maximum height and it starts coming down again, that is a projectile. The pen that I have in my hand, if I throw the pen up, 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 that is also a projectile while it's in the air. So, for our calculations, when we study vertical projectile motion, we will only be considering um, uh, projectile motion in, in closed systems. In other words, we will look at it in the absence of air friction, one. And two, we will also only consider um, objects near the Earth's surface that go directly up and come directly down in the same straight line. Okay. Right, so now we come to the crux of where gravity plays a role. And the first thing I want to talk about here is that gravitational acceleration is always downwards. Okay, so whenever we have an object in a gravitational field, that object will always accelerate downwards. It doesn't mean that it doesn't matter whether the object is going up or coming down. Right, we're not talking about its displacement, we're not talking about its motion, but rather we're talking about what force is going to be pulling it in a certain direction. So whenever I have this object, this object is naturally inclined to want to go down to the ground, to the earth, because it's in the earth's gravitational field and it would want to accelerate uh, downwards. Okay, so let's quickly consider um, a few things about this. Let's take an object, I have an object, and we will think about my pen, the pen that I just used now. When I throw the pen up, <coughs> when I throw the pen up, what is happening? The pen's got to come down. So everything I throw up, it's got to come down. But what is the reason that it comes down again? Firstly, if we think of this pen, I throw it up, it goes up, and then at a certain point, that very pen, it stops. And after it stops, it comes down. So for something to go from motion to no motion, or from moving to not moving any longer, it has to slow down. So this object goes up, it stops. In order for it to stop, it has to actually slow down. So let's say I have that object over there, and uh, I draw a straight line. Let's, oops, let's actually draw that line from there to there, and then let's add an arrow over there. That's my object. That's the distance the object is moving. <coughs> And that object is moving upwards. As that object moves upwards, there's a force acting downward on that object. And that force acting downward on the object, oops, is actually gravitational acceleration. Okay? Um, I'm just going to highlight that with a green highlighter over there. Uh, I don't need to cover it. That's a bad idea. Okay, let's just remove that quickly the gravitational acceleration is acting downwards. In other words, as my pen moves up, gravity is pulling it down. Because gravity is pulling my pen down, whilst it's moving up, it causes the pen to slow down until it reaches its maximum height. Now, if I take um, the same object, and let's consider that object moving downwards, like this, or like so, right? Gravity is going to act in the same direction as the motion. Now let's think about that. Let's think very carefully. If I have an object, this object is moving this way, and I come with a force that's going to push it in the same direction that it's already moving. 
with that object not move faster because it will get an added boost. So we can think of this as an object moving downwards whilst gravitational acceleration uh, also moves downwards. So that's what little g is. Little g, as you can see, a little g stands for gravitational. I'm going to put gravit acceleration. Mm, I have no idea if that's spelled correctly, but we'll check on the next slide. Anyway, very important, I want to write over here that you should note that gravity, and in fact we should choose a different color pen, gravity always acts downwards. I'll write that nice and big downwards. Okay, now why didn't I say gravity is always negative or gravity is always positive? No, it depends on your reference system. So for example, if you think about a reference system, um, let's take a black color, a reference system, right? For our questions, we'll consider upwards as positive and we'll take downward motion as negative, right? <clears throat> we'll take upward motion as positive, downward motion as negative. So in our calculations, gravity will always be negative, right? But not because gravity is always negative, rather because gravity is always downwards. You choose the reference system according to either what the question states or what you state at the beginning of the question. For example, we will take upward as positive, downward as negative. A quick recap of this slide, as an object moves upwards, Gravity is pulling that object downwards, and that's the reason the object starts to slow down. Whilst an object is in free fall downward, gravity also acts on the object, causing that object to speed up. Okay.